me what was it, what it was called. What's it called? Speculation and percolation. Because normally you do it over coffee, but nobody actually has coffee. While what is percolation? That. You know the technique for making coffee. So it's supposed to be a joke about speculation. Yeah. So. Well, that works even better. I can talk about speculation for hours. My name is Wenzel Maynard. Hi, oh. nice to meet you. Future Thinking Network. I am working as an assistant researcher at the University of the Arts here in Berlin, where I am mainly working at the intersection between speculative fiction, which is a literary genre and combines things like fantasy, for example, and science fiction, of course, and new and emerging technologies. So, and um, I'm writing about um, speculative fiction, uh, fiction and also about like world building processes basically which is a practice in speculative literature or speculative fiction literature like non-mimetic literature literature that creates different worlds secondary worlds as is known in this field so and for that I am going to introduce you to some of my readings which I like very much and that helped me thinking um, one of them is this beautiful book over here by uh, Mark J.P. Wolf, which is called Building Imaginary Worlds, The Theory and History of Subcreation. So in narratology, which is um, one field where I strongly um, pull my thinking from, because I'm very eclectic in my thinking, and one field I'm, I'm pulling from is uh, narratology. And um, so the turn towards world building and towards accepting the story world actually is something that is, lies beyond the plot, that lies beyond the character arc, and is a recent turn. I think it's like maybe 10, 15 years or something. And this one here, J.P. Wolf, along with authors like uh, Mary Laurie Ryan, Called possible world theory, contemporary narratology. Um, they and also David Herman, which I do not have here. I just have this one here, which is also um, edited by David Herman and uh, Marie Laurie Ryan. This is um, Rutledge Encyclopedia of Narrative Theory. So Herman, Ryan, and also Wolf are like, as I find, the most important authors at the moment on this field of world building. So how could world building help us actually to think about the future? And um, here I will turn to a different book and one of my most favorite science fiction authors who is called um, Daniel Suarez. This one here is the book Bios. I think this is the German title. The English one is different. But I also have objects. Yes, that'd be awesome. Uh, this one here was a project I did with students. It is. Um, a 3D printed teddy bear sprayed in an orange neon, um, which is the object itself. But it was part of an um, exhibition we did in Stockholm about um, narrative objects, basically. So this, this little fellow over here is part of a, a story world where a company called um, Cloudcare, I think was the name, Cloudcare Incorporated, um, they smartified everyday objects. So meaning they connected them to the internet, um, attaching them or um, deploying different devices and different sensors in them so they take data. So this fellow over here was called Placebo Bear. And what he did was uh, when children are cuddling with them, he was collecting the way that they, when, how often they were cuddling, uh, what they were sharing, what kind of information they were sharing with them, and taking the data and transferred it directly to, uh, directly to the um, child doctor so that the parents always uh, knew how healthy or unhealthy their kid was. And um, what we did with this exhibition is we were thinking about it, we, we took like five different objects, this was one of them, and then we created different stories about them, or like more thought about, okay, um, imagine in your world there's this bear, what ecosystem does this object now create? What other objects are there? For example, what we did was we were writing um, Amazon reviews for that or we were thinking about um, uh, poster advertisements, or we were um, staging or and, and um, recording like everyday phone interviews between a mother and her friend on the other side of the phone, but you can also only hear a mother, and then she's just sharing everyday stories like, yeah, you know, the bear, 
yeah, she's cuddling with it, it was fine, but yeah, I think I need to go, uh, I need to repair it, there's something wrong with it, and then it turns out that the bear got actually hacked, hacked by a hacker, and it became part of botnet to, um, which is, uh, I think, if, I don't know if you know about it, but like a uh, smart of, like, um, what they call Internet of Things, objects that are somehow connected to the Internet, they often have a very low um, security standard, so it's easy for a hacker to hack into them and to use multiple of those devices uh, to, as a so-called botnet to create DOS attacks on, on servers. Do you know that it exists now, the, those cuddle, like data collecting cuddle toys? It's called Baby Eyes? No way. Yeah, no, yes way, like genuinely. <laughs> it came out maybe last week. I, I did this project last year in yeah. August, and I still uh, I did it with um, five students of mine, and we went we flew over to Stockholm and did it there. And every now and then, somebody shares something like, "Oh, did you see this new thing? We just we exactly did this in in, in last August in Stockholm." So this is just another example of that. So for example, what we also had was like a smart water bottle that tells you how nutrition your water is and where you can refill it and what kind of um, additionals you need to go through the day or something. And then the other day, we, we just, there was this uh, new innovation now, like uh, a smart water bottle. Any it's, last tips for people thinking about the future? Um, don't. 